like as if it's a drill bit. Set this this way so I'm not going to puncture my wood. I'm going to come in 3 eighths of an inch from the bottom. And I'm going to use this as a drill bit. To, all we're doing is compressing all the grain out of the way. And it will stop the wood, which is pretty soft because we're using pine, from splitting. Okay? That'll make things a lot easier. So, I'm going to put a little bit of wood on here. Pay attention to your grain direction. What's that? You mean glue? Yeah, sorry, a little bit of glue. So, the wider part of this board is this top side. So, I'm going to use that to my advantage. Uh, it'll make it easier to sand everything when it's all done. Uh, if I can line this up to the narrow side, which I can, I'm going to be able to sand off the fat side easy. So, uh, the other thing too is this is dished out this way. This will tend to rock if that's the bottom, right? So if you put the, the dish so that it's down, the two ends will touch the floor and the middle will not. That'll make it more stable. So you want to think about those things as you put it together. Also, if this is cupped this way, I want that cup to be towards the inside of the box. So the corners come together on the project. If it's coming off the project like this, it's going to be really hard to make it nice. So I got to flip it over like this. Just be mindful of those things as you're putting it together. So put a little bit of glue on here. See if we can get this glue bottle to work or it's kind of dried out. It's uh, very dried out. Pause and grab another glue bottle. All right, let's see if we can get this done in the next three minutes before class is over. A little bit of glue. Doesn't need a whole lot. I don't need a bunch of squeeze out. Set this up on top. Grab a nail. Hold it so that it's flush to the corner and the edge and the bottom. Just flat. We do them one at a time as we go over. We don't want to do both ends first. We want to work the board over. If we have to, we can kind of tweak it that way. Get a little more control. Now that one's done. And then the, the glue is, is what's holding it in place, not the nail. The um, holds it in place before the glue dries. Yeah, they're both holding it. The glue will hold it long term, the, the nails are holding it short term. Yeah. So, I'm going to line this up this way. The glue's spread a little bit. I'm going to flip it back over where I can see it. So the glue in it. Bottom of the side. I'm not gonna measure this thing. Just gonna eyeball it. are in the bottom so you won't see them. I'm gonna pause this for a minute. Alright, so then we're gonna come over here and sink these nails. Just flush, we don't want to dent the wood. So now we have this U shape with two pieces on the end and one on the bottom. It's the same width as this piece, that's very important. So we're going to stand this up on end. Um, if you have to do a little bit of correction on this, this would be the, the time to do it. 
Um, hopefully these boards were cut pretty square, but uh, you could take a file or some sandpaper and clean this end up a little bit before you nail this next piece on if you had to. So, again, that curve angled down, that's important. We're going to do the bottom first. Get that lined up on the bottom. Your nail is a helping aid so I don't split anything. So now with these ends loose, I can move this end a little bit if I have to to line it up, which is what I will do. I'm going to move it till it's even. And as far as my placement goes, I want to be at least three quarters of an inch from the edge. So I'm coming down about three quarters of an inch to one inch, and then I'm putting my first nail. Um, I don't need to measure that just because I've done it so many times. I can measure with my eye very accurately, but you guys may want to get out a ruler for that. at least three nails in this end piece here and three here so I'm gonna go grab a couple more nails and we'll keep going let's chuck up a fresh nail I've got my nails on here, three in the bottom, three in each side. I'm going to do the other side and then we'll come right back. Okay, so now i got everything cut out, nailed in. I've got a general box shape. I need to go back and clean up all the squeeze out I got from glue, which I'm just doing with a wet towel. squeeze out cleaned up with the wet towel now you get to use that nail set so most of the time if I'm making a rough toolbox like this I don't care if the nails are really exposed but you might on the bottom because you don't want them to scratch anything so what we're gonna do um, is just put these right on the head of the screw and we're gonna tap them in just a little bit Let's see if I can reposition this to where you can see one so we're going to take this screw, we're just going to hold this right here, and then we're going to tap that in, and it's going to sink the screw in, or the nail, sorry, just below the surface, to where you could put putty on it and hide it. But for me, the real primary reason to do that is so, as the wood expands and contracts, it's not going to be scratching the bottom floor or popping out. 
don't want to go in too far either. You still want it to hold. Just in about a sixteenth. Okay. Um, like I said, you could do the ones on the ends, putty them over there if you got putty. You could take sawdust and mix it with glue and use that as a filler if you got fine sawdust. But these hand tools usually give us more chips, not really sawdust, so it's not going to be very good putty. Um, the sanding process, when you sand everything, you can collect all that fine dust from sanding and use that to make your putty. Okay? Um, So, box is ready for sanding. Um, you definitely want to sand before you put your rope handle in. So we got two different pieces of sandpaper here. And I want to sand this whole box also. We do have these little pieces we're going to talk about at speed. This will be an extra project you can do later. We'll talk about that. So I haven't forgot about those. But what I want to do for these is I want to take my, my quarter sheet of sandpaper Okay, this is one fourth of the, the full size piece. And I'm gonna fold it in exactly thirds. And the reason that we do that is so that when we're sanding, the paper lasts longer. It's more efficient. If we didn't do that, when we're sanding, the bottom's gonna grip something, the top's gonna grip your fingers, and the middle is just gonna do this. Notice there's no sanding going on. We're just wearing out the middle of the paper here. That's a really bad way to use paper. Here, if we do this, the paper has to move. It's sanding either my fingers on top or my fingers on the bottom if my two fingers are sliding away from each other. So this is a more efficient way to use it. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna break all these corners. Let me show you what that means. We're gonna take this box and we're gonna round over the edges just a little bit like this so that I have no sharp corners okay and I'm gonna go over this again with the smooth paper this is just the rough paper to shape everything if the edge is not perfect and it's sticking out a little bit this is a good time to sand all that flat and make it look really nice okay you're gonna come over here on this end grain I don't want to pull back I want to go down and off the board that way I don't splinter it if you splinter the wood, then you'll have more problems you gotta clean up. So pull down and away from the edge. Okay. This is how I typically hold on to my paper. I squeeze it in the palm of my hand and I use my thumb as the pressure to do the work. I found that over the years to be the most efficient way for me to hold the paper and to use it efficiently. Obviously you gotta change positions depending on what you're doing sometimes. So just want to make sure that that can't splinter. By rounding over that edge we're making that more durable so it doesn't splinter as you Actually, scoot the box around the ground. Okay. All these top edges, same thing. Pull away from the green. And then I would also suggest that you sand enough to sand your pencil marks off too. To save you some sanding, you can erase some of your line. It'll make it a little lighter so you have less sanding to do. Okay, so we're going to go back and get all that stuff, sand it out, make sure you get all the edges of the box everywhere, and then you got to go over the whole thing again with your finish grit. So for me, I'm doing this with an 80 grit to start, and then I'm going to finish with about a 150, maybe a 220, okay? 
fine. It doesn't have to be that smooth. Um, I'm not putting a fine finish on this. It's not fine finisher. This is a toolbox. It's going to get scuffed up. I just don't want it to give me any splinters. And I want it to be able to last. I will probably, if I were using this for myself and my business, I would just spray some quick clear on here. I'd put some Minwax, just paste wax on here to make it a little bit more water resistant. Or you could just paint it. That's a great way to add some durability to the product. So there's a little more cleanup that we could do to get these ends perfect and really make them look good. But I won't bore you guys with that on this camera. Um, the last thing we gotta do is get our, our rope handle put in here. So obviously I'm gonna have to clean mine up. I'm gonna have to burn the end and melt it a little bit so that I can put a knot in here. Once I get a knot in one end and the other end's clean, I wanna leave it long enough that I can feed it all the way through, make it kinda tight, so it's gonna stretch put my knot in there and then I'll cut the other end off the extra after it's already in the box okay I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, one end cut I'll do that off camera for you guys not to waste your time okay so I got my two and a half feet of rope six inches extra on either side I'm gonna turn on my fire source here and just lightly lightly Clean up those ends so that they don't keep uh, fraying on us. Set this somewhere where it can cool. And then we need to feed this in. This is going to go in this end. This is going to go in this end. And then put some knots in this. So I'm going to work this knot as close to the end, as tight as I can, and then I'm going to double it. Right at the end. Okay. Now i got to do the same thing over here. The difference is on this side, I want to get the knot as close to the other end as I can. So I'm going to start with a rough knot and then I'm going to pull this tight now I'm going to try and put another knot in here to use up the rest of that rope Okay, so you can see the rope stretches a little bit as I pull on it. It's going to stretch out, and as you put weight in the box, it's going to stretch out. That's why we start with it really, really taut or tight. Um, if you want, I do have a little bit of end here sticking out. This could be trimmed. This side looks fine. Uh, you could cut this and then reburn it with a fire source. Make sure you have permission to do that with whomever if you're a miner. And. Uh, you always want to make sure you're working safe. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Get that 
cleaned up. And that's it, that's all we need. There you go guys. Uh, completed toolbox project. A little tote for you to put your tools in or something else. My brother and I still have one of these things from when we were kids, one of our first projects we made in Cub Scouts. Um, it's a cool little project. Uh, it's very simple. It's a great way to start learning, a great way to learn the hand tools. I hope you guys have some fun with it.